So Jesus facing from within something he cannot even conceive of, his own heart, even to the point of death. Luke twenty two twenty three 23 tells us that Satan was also there in the garden. And you've got to know, Satan is throwing everything he can to keep Jesus from getting to the cross. Since Jesus came, he has been seeking a way to keep Jesus from dying for our shame, to keep Jesus from rising, to overcome our sin and death, to keep us from being able to place our faith in him, that we might be redeemed and made new, and that one day all things might be made new. We've already seen it a couple of times in the book of Mark when Jesus goes into the desert to be tempted by Satan. Satan takes him to a high place, says, look, Jesus, all of this can be yours. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to do what you were sent here by the Father to do. And then again, when Jesus is telling the disciples what he actually came to do, that he would bear our sin and shame on the cross, that he would rise again to overcome our sin and shame, Peter stands up and says, no, no way that our Messiah is going to the cross. And what does Jesus say? Get behind me, Satan. So listen, Satan is doing everything he can in this moment to keep Jesus from getting to that cross. I've heard it said that Satan, when Jesus died, had a party for three days. And then out pops Jesus, and Satan all of a sudden realizes he lost, and he's trying to return all the balloons. No! Jesus says, no one takes my life. I lay it down. I take it up. Isaiah 53 says that it pleased the Father to crush the Son for our sin. Satan doesn't want this at all because the moment he hung on a cross and said, it's finished, he was finished. And he knew it. So listen, Satan did not have a party when Jesus died. If there was ever a moment when Satan had a little giggle to himself on the inside and thought, maybe this is it, it was here in the garden. Because when that stress of what he would face on the cross hits him, it causes him, Matthew says, to fall to the ground. So listen, get this in our minds, this is not Jesus walking into a garden calmly and kind of bowing to his knees and kind of going, God, if this is just, you know, if you could come up with some other way, that would be fantastic. No. This is Jesus leaving the three and going a little further. And I don't even know if he made it where he wanted to get. Because when that weight of that sin and shame was bearing down on his back, he crumbles. He falls to the ground. This is not a way that a man in this time would generally pray. He would generally stand, raise his, uh, lift his arms out, lift his head up, and pray to the Father. Jesus falls. He's overwhelmed. Luke 22 says that he was dripping Drops of blood, a condition that only comes through the most dire stress. He's completely overwhelmed. Hebrews 5, 7 says that he was praying with great cries and with tears to the Father. So just as the next day he would be carrying this cross beam to the hill called Calvary that would weigh about 100 pounds, about a mile's distance, and he would fall under that weight and Simon the Cyrene would have to pick it up and carry it. He feels this soul crucifixion and he falls under the weight. 
But this is what he will feel spiritually, not what he will feel physically. Nobody's there to help him. I often wonder when I'm reading this text, the disciples, he just said, watch. Now he's going and he's falling. He's praying in a way men don't pray. He's bleeding. He's crying. He's yelling. They're nowhere to be found. We'll get to why in just a moment. But I think in this moment, as Satan looked around and he saw what seemed to be Jesus in a moment of weakness, he saw what seemed to be the Father not answering the Son. Maybe in that moment, he thought, maybe Jesus is about to do what Adam did. That he'll look at this tree and he'll say, I'll do it my own way. So if there was ever a moment, it was this moment. As in verse 36, Jesus says, God, if it is at all possible, Abba, Father, take this cup from me, let it pass. If there's anything else I can do, if there's any other teaching I can teach, any other miracle I can perform, if there's anything that will open the eyes of the blind, if there's any way that you can bring your people back into community with you, if there's any other way to say for God to love the world that he, anything other than gave his son, let's do that. This is the seriousness and the weight of our sin. The seriousness and the weight that he would take on himself. Thank you.